may be seated. Let us pray. As we gather here at this citadel of dialogical engagement, moved by joy of those who have fulfilled the requirements of graduation, we offer our sincere gratitude for the journey that has brought them through the rigorousness of academic life, shaping them even through their personal struggles to this moment of shared joy. We give you thanks for the supporters whose timely word of encouragement kept them going in the midst of foggy days. We thank thee for the countless and sometimes nameless institutional supporters who through their generosity helped to keep this light shining against the darkness that sometimes appears overwhelming. We give thanks for the leadership of the Board of Trustees who in their wisdom selected President Joel Lohr. We thank thee that his inaugural year has been stamped by his convivial spirit, a spirit which has hovered over this place, fostering an atmosphere of collegiality, communication, and cooperation. We thank thee for the tireless efforts of the faculty and staff who prove their love of teaching in each engagement with students. While we offer our thanks, we humbly request that you continue to fill the emptying pitcher of our humanity from thy full fountain. We are depleted by the senseless fires that burn in places of worship. We are depleted by violence that has invaded synagogues, mosques, and churches. We are depleted by racism, sexism, classism, homophobia, and xenophobia that are fueled by unchecked hate speech. Yet, with this knowledge of all around us, the issues of life, we can rejoice that this day, ambassadors of peace are being celebrated, for they are part of the real hope for all to live their best life. These are the thoughts of our hearts on this day, brood over them, and inshallah, at thy will, at thy beckon, let them be done. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Watts. Uh, that was a beautiful uh, prayer. So, okay, so the graduates, are you ready? Yes. That's good. Yeah, I love your smile. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. And assalamu alaikum and peace to all. Uh, President Lohr, our distinguished uh, speaker, uh, faculty and students and graduates and family and friends. Uh, it's my special honor as representative uh, of the Board of Trustees of Hartford Seminary to welcome you today to uh, Hartford, uh, to this uh, ceremony. My name is uh, Naseem Sheikh, and I'm first vice chair uh, of the board. I'm also a founding member of uh, Farmington Valley uh, American uh, Center in uh, Avon, Connecticut. So, Though relatively I'm new to the board, but I'm deeply embedded in the community and in the mission that we all share. And that is to strive for 
greater understanding uh, with the uh, with different interfaces that we live in. So the next part is just for graduates. So rest of you can rest. <laughs> so first, congratulations. You have been through the exams and the reflections, the papers, and the projects. Uh, you have a shiny new degree or certificates. And you should be proud of all the work that went into it. And yes, your family and your friends and all of us are very proud of you. I really think we should clap for our graduates. Second, we are a seminary. So the degree or certificate comes with conditions. The conditions are that you put into practice what you have learned here at Hartford Seminary. Or else, that degree or certificate is not worth the paper that it is printed on. That means you have to live out our mission in places which are not as convenient or as welcomed as what you have seen at the campus of Hartford Seminary. It means you have to seek out dialogue and uh, interfaith relationships and connect with people of different faith and no faith and support all other when one of us is under attack. And we all know, given the climate we live in, that it's very real. It also means you have to share knowledge. Some of that knowledge you have learned in the books, but most of it you have learned through your relationships with each other. Many before you have found creative ways to share that, either through services to worship places or through uh, nonprofit uh, endeavors, through social justice activism, and also through community gatherings. The list goes on. Only you can decide how you would like to make that change. But make no mistakes. We are counting on you. The world is drowning in misunderstanding. And it needs your words and your deeds. It needs your words and your deeds to help change that. You should see this certificate or degree as a call to action, not only as some new letters in front or after your name. We also hope you will share your experience at Hartford Seminary as you soon going to be our alumni are the best source to bring new students to Hartford Seminary. Again, you are our best hope as you are most reliable to bring new st students to Hartford Seminary, which is a place of hope and healing. So thank you all for the hours in the library, all the puzzling over assignments, all the lectures, and listening, and best wishes to you all. May God bless you.
Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom alehem. <laughs> You'll be out there. <laughs> I'd also like to wish all of the uh, Muslim students, faculty members, family members, community members, all of you here, uh, Ramadan Mubarak. May you have a peaceful Ramadan. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm here to greet you all, and it is my pleasure to do so. Greetings first, family and friends. Thank you for being here today. Greetings, faculty and staff, you who have invested so much in our graduates. Greetings to our trustees, those who volunteer of their time, their energy, their talents, their resources to make Hartford Seminary a blessing in this world. And most importantly, greetings to you, our graduates. Congratulations on your achievement. Your achievement today is fundamentally important, not only for your journey or for your career, but for our world. It's interesting, Nassim, uh, Sheikh and I did not compare notes, but so much of what we have to say is similar. You've been prepared for a meaningful life through Hartford Seminary. There has never been a more important time for thoughtful, wise leaders who can help our world figure out how to live peaceably with each other. I open my words today with greetings of peace, and I think peace ultimately is the word that defines Hartford Seminary. As many of you know, I'm the new president of Hartford Seminary. My name is Joel Lohr, and I'm pleased to serve, I'm honored to serve here at this seminary after the 18 years of faithful service by Dr. Heidi Hadsell. I came to the seminary to give it my all, to help continue a place of peace and reconciliation in the world and to help it continue to lead the country as an educational bridge builder, one that teaches religion and helps those who are different from each other see their common humanity. We are committed to peace and we know that peace does not come by accident. We also know all too well that people of different faiths it does nothing for us to pretend that we are all the same, even while we belong equally to the same human family. On this point, I'm reminded of an important quote, one that I go to often by Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. He says this, I think he got it right. The greatest religious challenge is this, to see God's image in one who is not in my own image. In other words, do we see the image of God in those whose color, class, culture, or creed is different from mine? This is the central question we face as people of faith. Do we see God's image in those who are not in my own image? This is our task, this is our mission, this is our history. We explore differences and we deepen, in, deepen faith here at Hartford Seminary. We humbly seek the way of peace and are active peacemakers in the world. Hartford Seminary, as so many of you already know, is a place of firsts. I'm here to congratulate you as graduates, not only for choosing to study here, but for the accomplishment of graduating today. Hartford Seminary was founded way back in 1834. It says it right here, I think, on my, <laughs> on these little medallions. 1834. And we are proud to be the first seminary in the country that opened its doors to women in 1889. Absolutely. We are also proud to be the first seminary in the country to start a center for the study of Muslim-Christian relations in 1973. Absolutely. We are also proud to be the first seminary in the country to start an accredited Islamic chaplaincy program in 2001. Actually, on that note, I want to give a shout out to someone, Dr. Bilal Ansari, one of our new faculty members who's going to be taking up the role as co-director, and so I just want to draw attention to him. I should be doing individual shout outs to each faculty member, but... He's joining us on July 1st, and I just he's here today, so it's special that you're here. Thank you, Bilal. 
We are a place of firsts, but I continue to ask myself, as we all should, is being first enough? I do not think it is. By God's grace, we need to continue to find new ways, real ways to bless our country, our world, through the work that God has called us to. And so graduates, I simply ask this, what will you do with your degree, your certificate with this achievement today? Will you be content with leading an average life or will you strive with God's help to give everything you have to the causes of peace building, education, dialogue, and deepening the faith of others in this world through your unique callings and lives. Our world needs you. I can't say this enough. The world needs you. You are the leaders of the future. Go out and make a difference. And maybe a little word for all of us. Graduates included, think about how you might join us at Hartford Seminary. Join the Hartford Seminary movement, our educational programs that deepen faith and bring healing and hope to our world, a world that is so often polarized, so often hurting, and all too often violent. Our world needs all of us. Help us here at Hartford Seminary. I encourage you to continue to support us after you leave. Maybe there are ways you can continue to give. You actually, you'll hear a little bit about that from Amos later today. Um, there are ways that you can continue to support our work. We've given to you, at least we like to think we've given lots. We encourage you to give back to us. It is now my privilege, I've said enough, it's my privilege to introduce to you our honored graduation speaker for today. Dr. Sarah Saeed works as the senior advisor in the Community Affairs Unit of the Mayor's Office in New York City, where she is responsible for citywide Muslim engagement and facilitating culturally responsive agency outreach. She was recently named Chair and Executive Director of New York Civic Engagement Commission. Prior to this, Dr. Saeed worked for over seven years at the Interfaith Center of New York where she developed and implemented a five-year partnership to bring Catholic and Muslim social service providers in dialogue and joint action. She also designed and executed the Rabbi Marshall T. Meyer retreats for social justice on a biannual basis, bringing together New York's diverse grassroots religious leaders with secular and city agencies. Dr. Saeed has been involved for over two decades with Women in Islam Incorporated, a social justice and human rights organization dedicated to the empowerment of women throughout, through knowledge and practice of Islam. She speaks regularly on Islam, Muslim women, civic engagement, and interfaith relations. She holds a BA in Sociology and Near Eastern Studies from Princeton University and an MA and PhD from the University of Pennsylvania's Annenberg School for Communication. She also holds a Certificate in Reconciliation Leadership through the Institute for Global Leadership, and she recently participated in the American Muslim Civil Leadership Institute Fellows Program. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to our honored speaker, Dr. Sarah Saeed. of peace, assalamu alaikum, and also Ramadan Mubarak. Um, thank you so much to President Lohr, to trustees, students, faculty, alumni, family and friends for welcoming me here today to share this very joyous celebration of a proud moment in the lives of students. I also want to congratulate all of the graduates. Moments like today are an invitation for us to open our hearts to gratitude and reflection, and we heard that so beautifully in the prayer earlier. These are complex moments. We are happy that we got here. 
and also we usually feel a sense of marvel that we got here at all. <laughs> because usually the journey to moments like today has been full of ups and downs. We have had to face our own inner demons and help our better angels to prevail. As people of faith, we've probably turned to God many times to get us through the journey. And even as we feel a sense of relief and pride, we are also a little curious and perhaps nervous as to what is coming next. It is so important to hold on to this complexity. The great poet and philosopher Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi said, God turns you from one feeling to another and teaches by means of opposites so that you will have two wings to fly, not one. Moments like today's graduation and holding all the complexity of feelings they entail prepare us and help us to practice a way of being that is holistic, not polarized and not fragmented. It is a clarity of understanding the multifaceted nature of life, problems and our own selves. The complexity is a reflection of our unique approaches and personalities and styles. This embrace of complexity as shown to us in our own hearts is what we need to navigate the world outside the doorway of this seminary. Given the depth of your training here, I think you all know this well. Part of our challenge today is that people are not able to hold on to complexity and difference. We are unable to meet complexity with kindness. People, all of us, want things to be simple. We generally dislike change. We don't like differences of opinion, of belief, or ideas. Even though we know intellectually that it's not possible for everyone to be the same, in our hearts we all struggle with difference. And fear often takes the center stage in moments of change and complexity like we have today. That dynamic inside each of our own hearts is mirrored in the national dynamic. At a moment when our country and its leaders are struggling with the changing face of America, as it becomes a majority minority nation over the next few decades. Parker Palmer, in his book, Healing the Heart of Democracy, quotes Terry Tempest Williams saying, the human heart is the first home of democracy. It is where we embrace questions. Can we be equitable? Can we be generous? Can we listen with our whole beings, not just our minds, and offer attention rather than opinion? And do we have enough resolve in our hearts to act courageously, relentlessly, without ever giving up, ever? Trusting our fellow citizens to join us in our determined pursuit of a living democracy. The human heart is also central in Islamic theology and indeed many faiths. As you know, a hadith instructs us, God said, neither my heavens nor my earth can contain me, but the heart of my believing servant contains me. And another one that says, beware, in the body there is a flesh. If it is sound, the whole body is sound. And if it is corrupt, the whole body is corrupt. And behold, it is the heart. The heart and the condition of our hearts is central to our politics and our spirituality. Yet keeping the heart clear is one of the most central or most challenging facets of our life today. We have an incredible amount of distractions. We have to check our emails and our phones. We have to see what's on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. We have to be up to speed with the latest news. And even our work distracts us. Sometimes I'm doing the work for community and it's a work of service. But if I work excessively, I don't take the time for my own spiritual nourishment. I don't take the time to read Quran or do my dhikr or even just breathe and meditate. Yet these ritual practices are so necessary. It's a vitamin S for spiritual stamina that is needed to repair the tears in our social, political, and civic fabric. Keeping our hearts clear is what enables us to do the work of deep empathy and compassion 
for our own struggles and for the struggles of others in our midst. Poverty, homelessness, discrimination, displacement, climate change, health care, cycles of violence, all can be broken only by starting in our own hearts. Keeping our hearts clear is what enables a living democracy. This is where seminary graduates can play a crucial role. You are among the leaders who tend to the personal and collective wounds created by fear. Through spiritually grounded remedies, you help heal hearts and help us weave a social fabric that brings people together. You are part of the key to how this nation will move forward as a collective together. I see your future work teaching, researching, ministering to anyone in need as central. There are two main areas of work that I want to charge you to pay attention to as you walk out of the doors of seminary. The first charge is to lead from the inside out. Take time to strengthen and renew yourselves, physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, socially, and intellectually, and it has to be on an ongoing basis. Often the people working hardest at changing our world are the ones that take care of themselves the least. But we have to believe that deep in our hearts, that when we don't turn inward, we will ultimately hurt the very causes that we seek to change. Without self-care, we are much more prone to projecting our own woundedness. It's the woundedness that all of us carry onto the world. Let us cultivate an inner ecology that allows our better angels to grow and thrive. The second charge is one that I'm bringing you as someone who is currently working in government, but also has worked in the nonprofit and academic sector. And I want you to think about yourselves as civic engagement specialists. Communities of faith and religious leaders and teachers play a very important role as connectors. You can serve as a voice for moral clarity for both our leaders and our communities. A really important challenge that I navigate daily in my work is a lack of trust that people have in government and our leaders. And I'm not going to get into that and give you examples. I think we only need to turn to the news and turn on our TVs. And we'll see plenty of reasons for why people do not trust government and why this country and in other, in this country and in other Western democracies, there's actually a decline in voting. The question is more what we can do about this lack of trust and the underlying disappointment. Government leaders must reform the inequalities that have very often been perpetuated by government systems and structures. To do that, we, as government officials, and, gov and they, as government officials, need to look within. We need to be grounded in our own hearts and to have moral courage. Your gentle and strong reminders to government leaders can help them revive and deepen their, mo their own moral grounding. The second area where we need your leadership is to help us rediscover and revive what we know to be as the common good. I asked somebody about this phrase and they said they hadn't heard it in a long time. What does it mean? We probably need to have a conversation about what we all think this means. When I'm using the phrase, I'm talking about strengthening the selfness, selflessness that is innate in each of us. The impetus to give that is reflected in decisions that put the good of the collective first over our own interests. I'm also talking about a sense that we have a shared destiny as humanity, that each of us has an innate dignity that must be reinforced in how we treat each other, not just in daily interactions, but it starts there, also in our policy making. We desperately need a shared sense of common humanity that 
doesn't white out our differences, but rather celebrates them. We need a common good that is defined by leaving no one behind, especially the most vulnerable in our midst. To get there, we need lots of conversations happening at the grassroots, across dining tables, community spaces, and in the public square. It needs a stamina, commitment, and drive that I believe can be nurtured through the work of people, graduates like you, who carry and hold their faith in confidence and humility in a world where religion has its skeptics, and also for good reason, because religion is often tied up in violence, terrorism, xenophobia, mass shootings, inequalities of class, race, sexuality, and gender. All have seen religion being seen used to demean and exclude. But the graduates of seminaries like this, like Hartford, and you as individuals, you've trained to wield and apply spiritual teachings in a way that can really redirect our conversation towards positive ends. You can direct us towards a collective soul searching that will help us to solve some of the most complex challenges that are facing our country and our world. As you move beyond the doors of this seminary into the world, I pray that you hold on to your complexity with mindfulness, that you treasure your connectedness to spiritual learning and practice, and that you share it generously with families, communities, and a country that desperately needs your wisdom and your guidance. I pray that God blesses each and every one of you and keeps you strong in your journey ahead. Amen.
congratulations to the class of 2019. Allow me to add my welcome and greetings to you. I am the Reverend Dr. Chanel T. Smith, and I'm reading my name on a script. <laughs> I am Associate Professor of New Testament and Christian Origins here. Our interim academic dean, the Reverend Dr. David D. Grafton, was unable to attend today because his own daughter is graduating from Georgetown University tomorrow, tomorrow morning actually. He wishes he could be here and sends his best wishes to all of you. A key component of the mission of Harvard Seminary is to serve God by preparing leaders, scholars, and religious students to understand and live faithfully in today's multi-faith and pluralistic world. In service to that mission, we set aside this day for the awarding of certificates and degrees, offering our heartiest congratulations to all who receive them. I just have one question for you. Are you ready to receive those degrees? <laughs> the first group of graduates have completed the requirements for our Black Ministries Leadership Certificate programs. Benjamin Watts, AKA the Preaching Whisperer. <laughs> Director of the Black Ministries Program and Faculty Associate in Religious and Community Life will come to introduce the program and present these candidates to President Lohr to receive their certificates. <laughs> will the BMP graduates please stand? We are excited today to celebrate with you this 2019 class, will you come forward as your name was called and receive your certificates? <laughs> Lee Brown, the third. <laughs> Ruth Ann Bush. Reverend G, Jametta Flood. <laughs> the hardest working president, the 2019 president of the BNP class, Sister Geraldine Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> Tenno Glenn Rose Sr. My man. <laughs> Canetta Loretta Louise Richardson. Karanika. I had all those names. Thank you. Congratulations to all of our graduates. Coming to the stage. I always wanted to say that. I don't know why. <laughs> Coming to the stage is M.T. Winter who retired as a full professor and stayed with us to direct the Women's Leadership Institute and the Masters of Arts in Transformative Leadership and Spirituality. MT, please come and introduce the Women's Leadership Institute and the graduates in this program. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's good to be back doing the same thing again for the 22nd year. <laughs> the Women's Leadership Institute is an experience-based program in applied spirituality. 
This year's graduates have successfully developed leadership skills rooted in a transformed consciousness that is inclusive, justice-based, globally oriented, and ritually expressed. WLI class of 2019, please stand wherever you are. There you go. And come to the edge here of the stage. And when your name is called, please come forward to receive your certificate of achievement. Leading the line is Teresa M. Christie. Marie Satzewitz in absentia, Heather Faye Dawson also in absentia, but here in the flesh, <laughs> Ina Skassel. Okay, moving right along, she's here somewhere. <laughs> Einur Gunas. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. Lakia Shaban Leitner Paget. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, sweetie. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> Angela Martin in absentia. Carolyn Merrick. Sanchez Morano. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And from East Africa, Immaculate Tusingwire. Congratulations, all. I would like to invite Brian Clark, faculty associate in world Christianity and the best director of online learning you will ever meet. <laughs> he will introduce the graduate certificate program and its graduates. Thank you. The following group of graduates have completed the requirements for our graduate certificate programs. Each certificate allows the students to conduct in-depth master's level work with seminary faculty and cultivate expertise in a focused area. This year's graduates are from the areas of Imam and Muslim community leadership, Islamic studies and Christian Muslim relations, spirituality, interfaith dialogue, Islamic chaplaincy, and religious studies. Those persons receiving graduate certificates today have successfully completed their work in these six focused areas. Please uh, rise, and as I call your name, come forward. Sara Tuba Alpat. Sara Zubeda Ashraf, in absentia. Yilmaz Basak. Adam Dakin. Oh, he's also in absentia, I'm sorry. Scott Allen Gardner is in absentia. Uh, Trisha Pethick. We have Zuhair Shaf in absentia, Hannah Unis in absentia, 
And last, Zubair Osman Yusuf. It's the voice. Did you hear his voice? <laughs> Allison Norton is a hidden gem. She is visiting assistant professor in migration studies and congregational life and will introduce the international peacemaking program, students who are receiving their graduate certificates. Good afternoon. So among our graduate certificate recipients, there are six students who took part in the International Peacemaking Program, which brings together Christians, Muslims, and Jews. These students study interfaith dialogue, leadership skills, and public engagement, and they're embedded in local faith communities. The IPP students who will receive the graduate certificates in interfaith dialogue and in Islamic studies and Christian Muslim relations will now please rise. And each of you proceed to the podium as your name is called. From the United States, Ruth Ann Alcabez in absentia. From Indonesia, David Dwi Krishna. <laughs> From Albania, Albi Hosha. <laughs> From the United States, George Alfred LeBeouf III. From Tunisia, Haifa Suilami. <laughs> and from the United States, Megan Elizabeth Strauss. <laughs> Now let me tell you about this next professor. There's this amazing professor who teaches New Testament here. I also direct the cooperative MDiv program and I will now introduce the program and its students. The seminary has cooperative agreements with Yale Divinity School, Boston University, Drew University, and Chicago Theological School that allow qualified Masters of Arts students to begin their studies here at Harvard Seminary and, if accepted, to proceed to any of the cooperating seminaries to pursue a Master of Divinity degree. This program gives an opportunity for the seminary to educate the particularities of Christian faith, but also to give skills to explore differences and commonalities in today's multi-faith and pluralistic world to those who wish to be involved in Christian ministry. We have three students this year who have taken advantage of this program and will continue their education at one of our partner schools. Will you please rise? and come to the stage. <laughs> Anne Venome Conger, Venome. Venome. <laughs> You ready? <laughs> Roberta Monique Harris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And last but not least, Mary Louise Staubmeier. <laughs> We now turn to degree programs. I would like to invite back the incomparable Professor M.T. Winter, who directs the Masters of Arts in Transformative Leadership and Spirituality. She's here. <laughs> Please come to introduce the graduates. <laughs> We have the best faculty in the world. <laughs> <That's right>. Amen. <laughs> Let me say this about the degree. The Master of Arts in Transformative Leadership and Spirituality is a pioneering program designed for those engaged in leadership roles or serving in the public or private sector or like a growing number of individuals today, simply want to deepen their understanding of how to live their faith fully and with integrity in today's multi-faith and pluralistic world. I now invite the candidates for this degree to stand and remain in place. As President Joel Lohr confers the degree. It is my pleasure to confer this degree upon you by the power vested in me by vote of the faculty and the board of trustees and by virtue of the standing of Hartford Seminary as an accredited educational institution located in the state of Connecticut. I confer upon you the degree Master of Arts in Transformative Leadership and Spirituality with all of its rights and privileges. Congratulations. Amen. And now when I call your name, please come forward to receive your diploma and your hood in recognition of your achievement. And first we have Margaret Capon. Roberts. Ronald A. Thompson in absentia, and right here in our midst, Roberta J. Whitty. Thank <laughs> you. 
I would now like to invite my colleague, a man with two PhDs, <laughs> Najib George Awad, professor of Christian theology and Eastern Christian thought. Please come to introduce the Masters of Arts in Religious Studies and its graduates. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and heartily congratulations to our students. We are very, very proud of you. The Master of Arts in Religious Studies degree allows persons of diverse religious backgrounds to deepen and broaden their understandings of faith traditions, their own and those of others. It invites students to reflect on the challenge of diversity in a dialogical setting and to meaningfully relate religious theory and spiritual practice to the context in which faith communities exist in daily life, community, and the world at large. Those students receiving the Master of Arts degree today have successfully completed 48 credits of work including at least nine credits in a focused area of study. Each person has also completed a final project or a paper or thesis, the titles of which are listed in your programs. And all of them are really impressive titles and stimulating subjects. I will now present these candidates to President Lohr to receive their diplomas after which each will be hooded. The candidates for the Master of Arts in Religious Studies degree will now please rise, but remain at your places for the degree conferral by President Lohr. Graduates. By the power vested in me, by vote of the faculty and the board of trustees, and by virtue of the standing of Hartford Seminary as an accredited educational institution located in the state of Connecticut, I confer upon you the degree Master of Arts with all of its rights and privileges. Congratulations. My list. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Khalil Abdullah. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Ali, Ali Ak in absentia. Betul Zahra Boykikas. Boykikas. Congratulations. Congratulations. Carmen Edna Evans. Congratulations. Congratulations. Maurice Evans. Well done, Maurice. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. 
Elizabeth Ann Gallagher. in absentia, Nihal Ahmad Khan. Jasmine Yenai in absentia. <laughs> Timur Yuskayev, <laughs> Associate Professor of Contemporary Islam co-director of the Islamic Chaplaincy Program, and who will take the Muslim World Journal to its next greatest height as one of its co-editors, will now present the graduates for the entire Islamic Chaplaincy Program. Assalamualaikum. Chaplain Pathak, Assalamualaikum. <laughs> All right, so I'm supposed to read. Oh, okay, so um, <laughs> the Islamic Chaplaincy Program combines the Master of Arts in Religious Studies degree with a focus on Islamic studies and Christian Muslim relations, with the graduate certificate in Islamic Chaplaincy for a total of 72 credits of graduate theological work. This pioneering program prepares Muslim chaplains to serve in universities, hospitals, prisons, and the armed services. That is the script. The experience I just had just a conversation with three people who, two of whom are about to graduate. And they told at least two stories that were about saving a life or preserving a soul. I will now present the candidate for this degree to receive their diplomas. 
after which, after each, each will be hooded. The candidates for the Master of Arts in Religious Studies degree and the Graduate Certificate in Islamic Chaplaincy will now please rise, but remain in your places for the degree conferral by President Lohr. By the power vested in me by vote of the faculty and the board of trustees, and by virtue of the standing of Hartford Seminary as an accredited educational institution located in the state of Connecticut, I confer upon you the degree Master of Arts in Religious Studies with all of its rights and privileges. Congratulations. All right. Shahid Abdul Jabbar. Amir Durich. <laughs> Anson, which means lieutenant. Bawa Abdullahi Langani. the man who does more than mega church studies and whose research is cited all over the world. You know who I'm talking about. Who am I talking about? Yes. Scott Thumma, professor of sociology of religion and director of the doctor of ministry program. My neighbor, I'm going to have to TP her house, I think. <laughs> Congratulations, graduates. Uh, I want you to know that you could actually, some of you, come back and do a Doctor of Ministry with us. So, so think about that. The Doctor of Ministry degree stresses the reflective practice of ministry promoting entrepreneurial forms of religious leadership exemplified by innovative but practical projects that are informed by the needs of a community but also its social context. Religious leaders from various religious traditions and diverse settings, including chaplaincy, religious nonprofits, and congregations, are able to enrich their capacity for leadership and enhance their vitality of their places of worship. In this day, we have five candidates who will have their degrees conferred. Would the candidates for the Doctor of Ministry please rise? but remain in your places for the degree conferral by President Lohr. Oh. 
soon to be doctors. And you got the stripes. <laughs> by the power vested in me, by the faculty, vote of the faculty and the board of trustees, and by virtue of the standing of Hartford Seminary as an accredited educational institution located in the state of Connecticut, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Ministry with all of its rights and privileges. Congratulations. Hold your horse. <laughs> Would you please proceed after I call your name and read the project title of your project? <laughs> David, David A. Larson, teaching an old country mainline church to change before a long-term pastor retires. Using freedom, small groups, and appreciative inquiry for a foundation, to build a foundation for action reflection teams. David Larson. James Haworth Latimer, improving local church governance and leadership capacity through non-directive coaching. Jim. Shaul Marshall Praver, Gates of Understanding, a Spiritual Ministry Project for Incarcerated Populations. Shaul. H. Small, in between time and space, exploring identity and facility in an interim season. Jill. but certainly not least. Edith Mary Kerr Steele, using the past to inform our future. Edie. Got it. 
It is hot. <laughs> well, we, please be seated. Thank you. We do not just confer degrees, we give out prizes. <laughs> Every year, the faculty award three scholarship prizes for outstanding papers written by our students. Students are nominated by the faculty, and today, we acknowledge these prize recipients and celebrate their accomplishments. This year, we had nine outstanding papers nominated, and the selection of the winners was challenging. We begin with the Heart Triumph Prize. Say that three times fast. It is awarded to the degree program student who has demonstrated excellence in written expression. The prize is named for Chester David Hartramp, president of the seminary from 1889 to 1903, and professor of biblical and ecclesiastical history for 36 years. Our recipient this year is J. Lee Lewis for her paper, A Community Thing, Religiosity's Role in Mediating Stressors for Immigrant Youth Attending a New England New England Liberal Arts College, nominated by Dr. Allison Norton. Jay Lee, if you're here, please rise. She's standing somewhere else. That's okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Jay Lee, if you watch this. Next is the William Thompson Prize, awarded to a student who has demonstrated notable proficiency in or interest in the field of biblical studies. The prize is named for William Thompson, Dean of the Seminary and Professor of Hebrew Language and Literature from 1834 to 1881. <laughs> then serving as Dean Emeritus until 1889. This is over 55 years. And this prize goes to Kira Jenny for her paper, Powerless or Powerful Woman, Interpretations of the Adulterous Wife in Ezekiel 16, nominated by Dr. Dina Grant. Kira, if you are here, please stand. Over there. Congratulations. Finally, we come to the Bennett Tyler Scholarship Prize, awarded to any student of the seminary, degree, or certificate who has demonstrated excellence in written expression. The prize is named for the first president of the seminary, Bennett Tyler, who was also professor of theology from 1834 to 1857. We are pleased to give the Tyler Prize to Kelly David for her paper, United Kingdom Divided Community, Mufti Mank and the Predicament of the Outsider, nominated by Dr. Timur Yuskayev. Kelly, if you're here, please rise so we can acknowledge you. She sends her regards. She sends her regards. Thank you. Please send her our congrats. In addition to these faculty prizes, we also acknowledge today an Interfaith Service Award known as the Seely J. Terry Prize, awarded to a student who demonstrates a commitment to academic achievement and excellence in interfaith community work in her or his local context. This prize is given in honor of a cherished employee of Mr. Sanford Cloud Jr., who is a former chair of the Hartford Seminary Board of Trustees. We welcome to the podium Mr. Sanford Cloud Jr. Thank you, Professor Smith. Uh, Dr. Lohr, uh, as a former chair of the board, I want to add my welcome to you to Hartford and to Hartford Seminary, this great academic institution, and I hope and expect that your presidency will be an outstanding one. Dr. Saeed, first vice chair of the board, and other trustees who are here, and our distinguished faculty, and friends and family to the graduates of 
2019. I am delighted to be here uh, today uh, for this graduation class. Uh, you have reached a significant pinnacle of achievement in your education and pursuits. You should take a great pride in your achievement and enjoy uh, this wonderful moment with family and friends. You are all gifted and talented and I hope that uh, you will go out into the world and make it a better place for all of us, not just some of us. As uh, Professor Smith indicated, every a year I present a gift of three of the great books of faith and a monetary a gift to a student who has made a difference in the interfaith of life of Hartford Seminary and the broader community in honor of my longtime executive assistant, Seeley Terry. Seeley was a deep person of faith and valued the diversity of faith communities. I established this set of gifts uh, 15 years ago in honor of her memory and the work we did together building community across all of the divides of race, ethnicity, religion, gender, and orientation for over 26 years. This year marks the 15th anniversary of her passing. The recipient of this year's Seely J. Terry Prize began studying at Hartford Seminary in 2017 as a fellow in the International Peacemaking Program. After completing that program, he decided to stay at Hartford Seminary to complete his Master of Arts in Religious Studies with a focus in theology. His concern for the ongoing relationship between Muslims and Christians in his homeland has led him to deep thinking about a Christian political public theology that calls his fellow Christians into friendship with the Muslim majority in ways that are grounded in the reality of the Indonesian context and critical Christian theology. As a young and budding scholar, he will have an important role to play in his seminary as a teacher of theology. The C.D. J. Terry Prize goes to Dayang Kiranyanwa. Are you still excited? Okay. This is the second year for our Harvard Seminary Preaching Award. Every religious tradition places considerable importance around the verbal expression of instructions, commitments, and edification for religious life. This award is given for the most outstanding oral presentation of thoughts, beliefs, and values from among our MA and certificate students as a result of a preaching competition judged by a panel of faculty from different faith traditions. This award comes with a monetary prize and the honor of delivering their presentation to the Board of Trustees at the final chapel service of the year. The preaching prize this year was a result of a split decision. <gasps> I'm having fun up here, can you tell? <laughs> the prize goes to David Figliuzzi and Safwan Sheikh. If 
you are here, please stand. Congratulations. As our ceremonies come to a conclusion, I would like to welcome to the podium Reverend Jean Amos Liss, who is the chair of the Alumni Council. Amos holds a BS in Electrical Engineering from the University of Massachusetts Lowell, a Certificate in Black Ministries and a Master's of Religious Studies at Harvard Seminary. He is a marriage and family therapist and works as a domestic violence counselor at the Connecticut Department of Corrections and various mental agencies in Connecticut. He is the resident theologian at Zion Haitian Baptist Church of Medford, Massachusetts, and the founder and lead educator at LYS Lift Your Spirit Ministries. He is an ordained minister and the American Baptist Churches US with the American Baptist Churches USA and a church consultant. Goodness, Amos. <laughs> he rocks. <laughs> Please come to offer the closing charge and prayer for all of our graduates. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. Greetings. After all this, I better have something good to say, all right? Congratulations to the graduates. I'm sorry, I'm going to address the graduates because my job here is to get them to get involved in the alumni council <laughs> and also to get some money from them. Make it play. <laughs> All right, so no shame about it. <laughs> so you are now Hartford Seminary graduates. Congratulations. I know you guys have worked hard did many papers, countless hours of sleepless nights. I want you to know you didn't do it by yourself. I want you to stand, all the graduates, please stand. <laughs> and I want you to give a big round of applause to all your family members, friends, who supported you along that journey. You may be seated. So before you leave here today, there is a nice table for the alumni council. Please, before you leave, give us your email address, an active email address. Because we need, yes, we're not taking a fake one. Right, give us an active email address. They want you to check every day. They want that comes to your phone. That's the one we want. So we can be in contact with you, we can be in touch with you. And the second thing, if you go to the Hartford Seminary webpage, there's this new option. You go to the giving, say, I heart Sam, right? You say, donation drive. <laughs> now we have the ability to help you donate monthly to the seminary. <laughs> Mon see, we not, I know you don't have much money. We're not asking you to give 10,000, not even 1,000. But if you use your credit card and give one dollar a month, let's say two, maybe 10, what's that? Two coffees from Starbucks? Give two dollars a month, 10 dollars a month, and that will show up on your credit card on a monthly statement. That will remind you what this place did for you and how much you value this place. Can you imagine as you get older to know that you can tell your kids, your grandkids, you supported this, this seminary from the day you graduated? That would be awesome. Because if you value this place, what this place did for you, the least you can do is give a dollar a month. What's that? 50, what, $12 a, a year? Come on, we can do better than that, right? So we're counting on you. All right, so enough with the money thing, right? So, 
what I want to tell you today, because it's always a challenge being the last speaker, right? After all these great speakers speak now, I have to say something smart and, and inspiring, right? So what I want to tell you today as you leave this place, you have been trained, you have been equipped, you are ready to go. Find your passion and follow it. As Dr. Kin say, your tomorrow is today. Today you go forth into this world as Hartford Seminary graduates. Hartford Seminary graduates. No matter what context you end up working with, may you be a chaplain or an imam, community organizer, a church leader, may you continue to embody the values of this place. Those are values to build stronger communities, to be a voice for the voiceless, to stand with those who are being marginalized, to show kindness, compassion, understanding, and love to everyone. I charge you today to love the people you serve. Whether you are a pastor, a community leader, a church organizer, or in any capacity that touches other human beings. Love them enough to give them the best you have in response to what God has given you. I charge you to be an example of transformative spirituality by being engaged with the world around you. Never allow, allow yourself to be comfortable or complacent as long as people are being marginalized and injustice is being perpetrated. Finally, I charge you not to be so satisfied with what you think you know, that you do not benefit from new insights and lessons that God wants you to learn. And to conclude this, I'm reminded of the word of the great mistake, Ribin Jana Tagore. He said, I slept and dreamed that life was joy. I woke and saw life was service. I acted, and behold, service was joy. Go and live a life of service. And in so doing, may you find joy. Congratulations. And remember, Hartford Seminary will always be your home. Let's, let's, let, let's stand so we can conclude with a prayer. Let's pray. Perfect God, holy God, we thank you for life this day, for Hartford Seminary. We thank you for all the faculties and staff. We thank you for our president, Dr. Law. We thank you for this place, and may this fine institution continue to be a beacon, an example for hope, peace, love, and kindness, and engagement and dialogue in a world of difference. And finally, thank you for the graduates. These graduates, oh God, have made sacrifices. They have studied hard and have acquired this knowledge. Show them, oh God, how to use it wisely to make the world a better place for all. As they leave this sacred place, oh God, may your richest blessing be upon them and all of their families. Bless their lives from this day on with goodness, compassion, kindness, understanding, and love. Grant them faith and courage and purpose direction and perseverance so that they can serve you and their communities in effective ways. Grant them, O oh God, a desire to desire to love, to work for peace, engage in honest dialogue, to seek reconciliation among peoples, to work for justice and fairness, and to stand with the oppressed. 
May they be eager to do good and to find joy in the life of service. And finally, O oh God, may they always be mindful that knowledge comes from learning, but wisdom comes from you. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we did it. <laughs> or rather, you did it. Congratulations to the class of 2019. <laughs> to all of our graduates, their families, their supporting communities, and to their professors, congratulations. Following the recessional hymn, please join us in the meeting room for a reception hosted by the Alumni Council, honoring today's graduates. Again, let us celebrate our graduates on this, your day of such accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you.